In this video I want to pay attention to a broadband uh, oscillator and oscillators more in general. I have published many oscillators on YouTube uh, always with a demo schematic but now I don't have a demo schematic and I want to get more into theoretical and of course practical issues. This is the classic uh, circuit from a transistor oscillator and on the internet you will almost never find this part that is the potentiometer here with which you can set the working point and that's the reason why so many oscillators fail. So use here a potentiometer to set the working point. These values are critical. They form a capacitive voltage divider. This whole part is also critical. This is the power supply. Often forgotten, but the wiring here, for instance, could be very long. When this is long, the wiring can play a role and in a worst case scenario even can act as a coil. I want to demonstrate it with this circuit that I've also that I've also published on YouTube. A schematic from an oscillator that can be um, set to different frequencies with only one pot meter to these frequencies. And I had a lot of criticism about this circuit from people who know it. And they told, for instance, well, you don't have your power supply lead decoupled. That means that the leads itself here are act, act as a coil. But that was, uh, in my opinion, nonsense. I have decoupled it later, made other videos, decoupled the power supply lead very properly and still this circuit worked very good. So I got quite frustrated about the reactions from um, people with an education in radio, radio theory etc etc. I'm only an amateur but I did thousands of experiments and I know what I'm talking about. So uh, there was a proper decoupling in um, this circuit. This is the link to the video series. Um, okay, um, let's go to another circuit. This is a book from 1933 and this circuit shows a Hartley oscillator with a tube. You can see on the right side the frequency dependent unit here. It's in the lead from the uh, anode and it gets its supply voltage here, the anode, via this wire. But at the same time in this coil we have here a tapped part of the coil and uh, that has an other phase and that part of the frequency dependent element is sent back Uh, sorry, um, that's not good. The, the outer side from the coil is sent back, but the coil is tapped here. And that means that a part of the signal here is in another phase and is sent back to the, uh, the grid. 
and that has uh, an effect that the whole circuit starts to oscillate. So this is a Hartley circuit from 1933 and that's also something to take in account when you want to make an oscillator. This has also a transistorized version and there we have the same issue. Part of the coil is tapped and sent back to the grid. This part here. And there is a video on YouTube where I have mimicked this um, oscillator and made it into a transistor oscillator. The whole principle stays the same. There are other oscillators of course. I can be very um, broad when I want to uh, demonstrate it, but this is another circuit from 1933 and this also old book. And here we have a book from 1937 with again the same circuits. But here you have a principle that you can also use with transistor circuits. Here we have a frequency dependent unit consisting of this coil and that coil. They all work together. And here we also send back um, a part of the signal in another phase to the grid. That's also, that also shows the way why it is um, drawn this way. So you can also mimic this circuit to a uh, transistor circuit where you have in the collector lead a coil and a backup link coil in that same collector lead going via a capacitor to the base from the transistor and via a capacitor and set the transistor base with a voltage divider. There are videos on YouTube on my channel where I have explained that. So an interesting way to make a good working oscillator. Very simple backcoupling coil. Set the transistor to its working point with a pot meter from 22K, etc. Okay, let's go back to this circuit. This is a very popular and basic circuit from a VFO going from 2 MHz up to 10 MHz and here you see how it's made in real with the component values. The coil, of course, um, must have must work in the frequency band where the oscillator works say um, 20 turns here and a 500 picofarad cap or 40 turns then you will be in the 2 up to 10 megahertz band. Here a coupling capacitor and normally in this circuit you don't see this resistor here but I found that it gives better properties, a better waveform at the collector from this circuit. These two capacitors form a capacitive voltage divider that makes the whole circuit to oscillate in combination with the right working point. This resistor by the way protects the oscillator circuit for a too high base current, also very important. A too high base current uh, will lead to the immediate destruction from your uh, uh, transistor. And this capacitor here also damps the output from the wave and thus makes a better sine wave. You have to do that, test that experimentally. So these are good values uh, for that frequency band to up to 11 megahertz. Uh, I can't go to 
higher frequencies in this video that's that's another issue set the working point use your protecting resistor and use here stabilized voltage that's also very important with a non-stabilized voltage the oscillator will surely not work uh, properly will give different frequencies out and instability that was more or less all to tell about the basics from such a broadband oscillator and sometimes here after this circuit there is a buffer circuit to decouple uh, the oscillator when it sends its signal into the uh, mixing transistor often that's not necessary I found it but sometimes there is a buffer stage here and look at my other videos via my channel trailer there I've made many oscillators in this way with different values from C4 and C5 and C1 etc etc uh, but all working circuits and um, with uh, demos wish you luck